Hi, I'm Elizabeth Strom, and I'm with Junior Achievement in Saskatchewan. Junior Achievement in Saskatchewan is a not-for-profit organization. We offer innovative programs that stimulate and inspire elementary, middle, and high school students to value free enterprise, understand business and economics, and develop entrepreneurial and leadership skills. Our programs focus on three key areas, financial literacy, workplace readiness, and entrepreneurship. Today, we're going to have the program More Than Money. JA designed More Than Money to address the challenge of how to manage money. Today, we're gonna to learn how to identify the role of money in everyday life, make sound financial choices, manage a personal bank account by making deposits and withdrawals, identify ways to earn income through jobs or small business, make ethical personal and business management choices, develop a business plan based on skills and interests, and apply problem solving and management skills to operate a small business. So let's get started. At times during this presentation, I will ask the teacher to pause this recording in order to give students time to either go through a certain exercise or to play a game. So let's start off with your workbooks. Every student should have a workbook either in front of them or on their home computer. If you have a physical workbook, please put your name on the front. That is yours to keep. Turn to the first section on page three, the money garden. At the top of this page, you're gonna see a cartoon. I'm gonna ask your teacher to assign a student to each of the characters in the cartoon and to read out the cartoon as you would a play. I will be asking you to do this at multiple times throughout this presentation. Here's the cartoon. I'm going to pause this now and let you read through the cartoon, which we'll discuss a little later. So we have some interesting characters in this cartoon, don't we? Sir spend a lot is someone who, well, I think it's pretty obvious, he likes to spend a lot. We also have um, Super Saver, and this is a character that likes to save a lot. Right now, it looks like she's hoping that money grows on trees, but I think we can say that money doesn't grow. It does grow uh, in when we take care of it and manage it, which is what this more than money program is gonna be all about. Ernie the earner does sound like someone who recognizes that we have to work hard and earn our money. And because we work hard, we wanna be very careful about how we earn it, how we save it and how we spend it. Let's talk a little bit about the vocabulary on page three. We have some interesting terms there. I hope you've had a chance to look at those. Money, is anything accepted as payment. Earn is to receive income for labor or services. Income is money received as payment for work, goods, services, rent, or interest. Financial institution. What could be another word for financial institution? Yes, a bank or a credit union. A Financial institution is a business that provides money related services. When you make money and you want to put it in your bank account, that's called making a deposit. Well, what is a bank account or a savings account for that matter? Well, it is an, it is an account at a financial institution used to hold money that is not needed right away. Kind of like a piggy bank, but not inside your home. Why might we put our money at the bank and not in the piggy bank? Likely, that's because it's going to be safer. And as we're going to learn, you'll be able to make a little bit of money on that money that is sitting in the bank, as opposed to having it underneath your bed in a jar. Withdraw. That's when we want to take money out of our bank to spend. And what is interest? Well, we're going to learn a lot about interest in this program. Interest is money paid for the use of someone else's money. Let's turn the page to page four and talk about how money travels.
As you can see in this diagram, money has many ways of traveling. It kind of goes back and forth, doesn't it? In the middle are people, that's you and I. At the ends, there's the businesses and the banks. As you can see, people are the people either work in the business and make money or they're going to the business and spending money. People take the money that they earn out of business or from their business and put it into the bank. The bank gives people money back, either in the form of interest or also if the people need to take out the, the money. As you can see in the bank, we have a safe and that's where the bank keeps their money. Banks also give money back to businesses and businesses put money in banks. Well, how does that happen? Well, first of all, businesses often need money to grow. And sometimes that's a lot of money. So what banks do is they lend businesses money. When they do that, they will charge the business an interest rate. And that business must pay back the loan plus interest. Let's learn a little bit more about that. We're going to watch a short video here on how to track our money, as you'll see on the My Money Tracker just below the diagram. We're going to take the money and put your money into the bank. You can do that electronically now, either by email or on your phone. The money, keep, the money is kept safe in your account. Now we're gonna track how you earn, save and spend money in your bank account. On the money tracker, you'll see, we start off with a balance of $250 and that is on the right-hand column. That is where we're gonna be tracking exactly how much is in your bank account at all times. When we make a deposit, we put money into the bank account, as we mentioned. So to track this, we must put it in this yellow column with the plus sign. Let's start by putting the date down. Then we're gonna describe what, ki what kind of action we took. In this case, we raked leaves and we made money. So we're gonna deposit $5 in the addition column. We're gonna add that to the total. And now we have a new balance. The $255 is our new balance of what is currently in our bank account. Now we make a withdrawal. We're taking money out of our account and that is in the negative column. So first let's put the date down and we're buying school supplies. In this case, we'd like a new backpack. So this is a $10 withdrawal. We're gonna take $10 out to buy the new backpack. So we need to subtract that from our current total, which now gives us $245 in our bank account. So again, if you make a deposit, it comes out, of, it gets put into the plus sign column, or if we make a withdraw, it gets put into the negative column. This is how we track earn, save, and spending in our account. Now I'm going to ask your teacher to, to give everyone pencils and erasers. In the green My Money Tracker, you're going to take some time here as a class and on your own to go through some examples of withdrawals and deposits. I'm going to ask your teacher to pause the video in one minute here, and you're each going to go through each one of these withdrawals or deposits and put them on your money tracker. At the end, we should all come out to the same balance in our accounts. What I would recommend is that you just use today's date. So for each one of these withdrawals and deposits, you're going to use the same date. The first number is going to be the date of the month, and the second number is going to be today's date, the day of the week. All right, let's pause the video here and everyone take time to fill in your My Money Tracker.
All right. So you had a very busy day. You were buying gifts. You were getting gifts. You were buying books, soft drinks, downloading music, but you were selling le lemonade and feeding your neighbors goldfish and watering flowers. Let's see how you did. Here's the My Money Tracker. And as we can see, we've indicated here the description, whether it was a withdrawal or a deposit, and the balance. Did everybody come to the same balance? I'm going to pause it here and let you have a chance to review your responses. That's great. So now we've learned how to track money in our savings account. Let's talk about creating a business. Many times we can create a business based off of skills and experiences that we have and interests. And from that, we can think of business ideas. I'd like everybody to turn to page five. I'm going to take some time here and let pause the video and let each of you read through this story as if it was a play. When you've had a chance to read through, we'll come back and discuss this a little bit more. Well, that was fun. What was Ida's idea for a business? Yes, she's going to bake and sell cookies. She likes baking, that's her interest. Do you have an interest that you like to do? Have any of you tried to start your own business? What are some of the things that Ida needs to do in order to start a business? Right, Plan Man is going to help her create a business plan. It's very important that we think through all the things that we're gonna to need to do in order to plan our business. Let's look at the vocabulary on page five. What is a business? A company that makes a product or sells a service. Goods, items that are bought or sold. Services, work done for others, such as haircuts or car repairs. Who is an entrepreneur? Well, that could be you. That's anyone who starts a business. And what are skills? Skills are developed abilities a person does well. I'm gonna guess there are some of you that play sports like hockey or volleyball or soccer. Well, if you wanna be good at something, you have to keep improving and practicing in order to improve your skills. That's the same in a business. Ida's gonna to need to keep practicing her baking and developing those skills to, in order to be a successful entrepreneur. Now we're gonna play create a business game. I'm gonna need each of you to turn to page six of your booklets. And there's a money tracker at the top and a bill skills track, business skills tracker on the bottom. I'm going to need each of you to keep that with you as you play your game. These are the instructions for the game here. So I'm going to ask your teacher to pause this recording in just one minute so that you can follow these instructions carefully. There should be a game board and different game pieces, enough for up to six groups. So you'll need to be divided into six groups and ready to play the game. At the end, there's going to be two winners, the person who had the most money left in their account and the person who had acquired the most business skills. Both are equally important when you're considering starting a business. All right. I'm going to pause the video here and then we'll come back and learn a little bit more about skills. All right, welcome back. Well, I hope you had fun with that. Before we get into a little bit more of a discussion about interests and skills, Let's watch a short video about a young entrepreneur who did some really neat business, uh, created a really neat business.
you define who you are by, by what you do. You define what you put in your body. You define your health by what you put in your body. So this is kind of allowing you to define who you are, the defined bottle. Two years ago, I was 13, it was in the summer, and my mom got really into the whole fruit infused water scene. She, get, she bought one of those pitchers that, you know, they're like 50 pounds that you put all your recipes in. She got really into those recipes. The whole family loved them and I loved them. But whenever my mom left the house, she always grabbed a soda or a juice. So I wanted my mom to be able to enjoy those fresh fruit infused water recipes on the go and have something healthy at the same time. So I thought to myself, how could I make fruit infused water portable? So I did some sketches, had some kind of thoughts in my head, wrote some stuff down on notepads, pitched the idea to my parents. They thought about it and here I am. We did research on what other fruit infused water bottles were out there in the first place, what our competition was. Actually more people do fruit infused water recipes than put it into a bottle. We did a patent search and turns out it didn't exist. There's nothing else out there like this. I've always been into marketing. I've always loved uh, advertising. I had the idea of kind of having a uh, the teardrop and the, the fruit. You know, we got a lot of compliments on the on the logo, and, and I love it. One of the toughest things about starting a business or just launching a product is getting it off the ground. And the number one problem that we had was definitely manufacturing. You have to make the tools that make your product. And that was just like, wow, for me. So tooling and uh, manufacturing was, was difficult. I often get asked, you know, Carter, you're 15, how do you balance going to high school? You got homework to do, you got, you know, friends uh, to hang out with, you know, like, how do you balance it all? It does get busy sometimes, but, you know, I'm really, uh, the main guy, like I respond to emails, uh, you know, I, I call companies, uh, I walk into grocery stores and pitch my product. I love pitching to people. So I mean, I, you know, I do a good uh, amount of the work. Early on, what my strategy was is that I bought the domain names for websites associated with fruit infused water. And my goal was that someone who was Googling fruit infused water recipes would stumble upon these websites see it and we promote the bottle on those sites to drive traffic through to definebottle.com. So one of the ladies who was working for President Clinton's Health Matters Initiative, they have a fruit infused water station um, out in the event in California. So she was looking at fruit infused water recipes. My strategy worked. She saw the bottle, saw the story uh, and said, wow, you know, look what this kid's doing. Um, so she emailed us and she said, hey, what do you think of doing 600 bottles out here in California? And that was, you know, that was our first real, that was our debut event. That was our premier thing. And that was our first customer was President Bill Clinton. So he got one and every, and so did everyone in attendance. Everyone says that social media is just king. We get tons of messages every day saying, you know, the, like this, give idea, you know, pop top, uh, lanyard, you know, this and that. So that, that's been pretty much our main source of uh, feedback. Trade shows, well, they're not only a lot of fun, they're, they're, it's, it's actually a lot of hard work. You know, you're standing on your feet for, you know, six to eight hours a day. It gets very tiring. It's a great way to get new customers, obviously. It's a great way to, you know, build up social skills and a great way to get new business. My family is essentially my team. That's what I call them. Obviously, they're very supportive of my idea and the Define Bottle and the whole business. My parents, I call them my angel investors. <laughs> They have uh, put forth the money so far. We have sold $100,000 worth of bottles, so that's really exciting news, especially since we're so new and there's been such positive feedback. A couple years down the road, I'd like to really be a leader of a team of people who really share the same beliefs that I do. Making an impact on childhood obesity and diabetes in their community, especially when it comes to tackling both of those, those issues head on. I hope you enjoyed that last video. 
I think it's pretty exciting to watch a young person like that get inspired by some of the interests, some things that he noticed around him that he was interested in, and then came up with an idea to solve this issue. So let's turn to page seven in your uh, booklets. And you're going to see a chart here that Plan Man has done in order to prepare you for creating your business plan or a business plan. As you can see on this chart, there's a column here that lists all different interests. So right away, you can see, for instance, someone who's interested in food and cooking. You like creating fun foods. And then what would be a possible business idea? a drink stand, a food truck, a bakery, similar to Ida. So what I would like you to do is you're going to have a few minutes to pause this recording and you're going to read through this uh, list and identify three of these interests that you are, that you are interested in, things that you like, and then a possible business idea. So as you read through this row, you're gonna decide, yep, that's something that I think I would like to do. If there is something here that you don't see, but you are interested in, you can list it down here. And then at the end, I would like you to share that with your class. So please take some time here, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about creating business plans. Great, so hopefully you've been able to identify three interests that you have that could be developed into a business. So now let's talk about building a business. We're gonna uh, identify fundamental steps for starting a small business and developing a basic business plan. People create plans for all sorts of goals from simple things like a shopping list so are as complex as things as plans for your future. So I'd like you to come up with examples of plans that you've made. Things like plans for a weekend, planning what to pack for a trip, planning your lunches or clothes for a week. What are some plans that you've had to make? Yes, well, business needs need to plan just like people do. So here is our next slide. And again, I would like your teacher to assign roles for characters in the class. Read through the comic strip, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about the vocabulary when we're done. How did Ida answer the five W's? So now you're going to take a turn on page nine as well, and you're going to answer the five W's. What product or service will you sell? Who will be your customers? In my case, one of my first businesses that I started was mowing lawns for elderly people. So my service was mowing lawns and my customers were ladies who were not able to mow the laws themselves. When will your product or service be ready? In my case, it would only be ready as soon as the weather was warm enough and the grass had started growing after winter. Where will you get the money to start your business? In my case, that was gonna come from my parents. Why is your business needed? Well, like I mentioned, there were elderly ladies who were not capable of mowing the lawns for themselves. So there was a real need. I want you to think through in the next few minutes, your own business and how you would answer the five W's. You can guess on what kind of business if you're unsure by looking at the interest and like sheet that you filled in earlier. Now, at the bottom of the sheet on your business plan, you're going to see 
some startup costs that you're going to need to incur. Here is some examples of what Ida's startup costs would be. Also included here is some business information. You might want to consider some of those things as well. So as you can see, there were some real uh, startup costs for Ida. She needed flour, sugar, baking sheets. She needed advertising portfolios. So here we can see that advertising is also an expense that we need to consider. And then bags. She needed to buy a certain amount of bags here. Her total startup cost is $44. Now, if she was to sell 10 bags, how much does she need to charge for each of those bags in order to cover her cost and to make a profit? Let's pause the video here for a few minutes and see if you can come up with your own business plan and answer Ida's question. How much will she need to charge? Great, now that you've made a plan for your business, it's important to talk about how to run a business. Here's where we're gonna talk a little bit about why financial institutions lend money and why people borrow money for their businesses. We're gonna learn about the advantages and disadvantages of borrowing money, including the need to make interest payments. So again, we're going to revisit another, di another diagram that we looked at before. As we saw before, banks, mobile banks and credit unions work with the money that people deposit and sometimes lend that money to other people or businesses. With loans, businesses have an opportunity to earn even more money through increased sales. Money lent to a business is called a business loan. Business loans can be used to start a business or to expand or grow a business. Ida needs money to start her Tasty Treats business. Next, we're going to look at the comic strip on page 10. Again, I'm going to let you pause the recording here and assign characters to students in the class. Then we're gonna talk about Ida growing her business and running it efficiently. Now we've had a chance to look at uh, this um, comic strip. We can talk about Ida and whether or not you think Ida would be a good person to loan money to. Let's think about Ida's character. Let's think about her plan. And let's think about how her business is doing. We have to consider all of those things if we were to loan money to Ida, either as a bank or an individual person. Now let's think about Sir Spendalot. Do you think Sir Spendalot would be someone you would loan money to? Does he seem like he's responsible with money? Does he have a good track record? Those are all things to consider when making a decision whether or not someone is good to loan money to. Banks have to make this decision every day. Banks may decide to lend money to start a business if they think the business is based on a good idea and a sound plan, like Ida's plan. Banks may make a loan to a business that is doing well so that it can grow and do better and offer more jobs to the community. People can go to a bank for a loan and that making loans is good business for banks. So we're gonna practice making some good decisions. You're gonna to need to examine situations carefully and analyze the good and bad points for making a decision. The choice with more good points is generally a better choice than the one that has more bad choices. In the next few slides, I'm gonna give you some scenarios and I'm gonna ask you to discuss them as a class. Here's the first scenario. 
I'm going to ask your teacher to pause the video here. And as a class, you're going to decide whether there are more good points to lo loaning this person money or more bad points. Hopefully you've had a chance to go through the three scenarios of different people who are asking to borrow money. On the bottom of page 10, you're gonna see five qualities of a trustworthy borrower. After going through those scenarios, what are some of the, the qualities that you came up with for a trustworthy borrower? Without those dependable or responsible, were they honest, able to repay, timely with payments, experienced, in other words, have they borrowed money before? And do you know it will, do they know it will need to be repaid? These are all questions to ask. Hopefully you now have been able to come up with five qualities that make a trustworthy borrower. Let's play another game. I'm going to ask your teacher to pause this screen in just one minute after you've had a chance to go through the My Biz the Business game. On page 11, you're going to see the money tracker. On the money tracker, there is a new column that says loan payment in yellow. The object of this game is to pay back most of the loan, if not all of it. The person who pays back most of it or has completely paid it off is the winner. Here are the instructions uh, again for the game. Remember that you're always collecting $50 each time you pass start. You're going to pay $100 towards your first loan each time you land on make a loan payment space. The game pieces are all in the kit and your teacher will, should have enough for six groups. Have fun and I'll see you shortly. Well, I hope you had fun in that last game. Let's talk about global success. The pace of global change has quickened in recent years. Global connections affect daily life for people everywhere. Can you think of some ways in which new changes make it easier for people to do business globally? Hmm, yes, online ordering and global shipping means you can have customers and employees from anywhere in the world instead of those just in your community. Advances in technology have made it possible to work and do business all around the world. Have you ever traded something with another friend or brother or sister? Perhaps something like trading food at lunch or trading books. This practice of exchanging one thing for another is called barter and has been around for a long time. Bartering is not as common now. Most goods and services are bought using money. However, barter or any other form of buying, selling or exchanging goods and services is called trade. Let's talk a little bit more about this and watch the next slide. Again, I'm going to ask your teacher to pause the video and assign characters to different students in the class. So now let's talk a little bit about the vocabulary on page 13. What is trade? Well, we mentioned is the act of buying, selling, or exchanging goods or services. Trading is just like what you do at lunchtime. Maybe you trade a sandwich for a cookie. Import, that's when we buy goods or services from other countries. Export is when we sell goods or services to other countries. What is opportunity cost? Plan Man talks about that here in the cartoon. The next 
best option a person gives up when making a choice. That is what an opportunity cost means. Let's look again here. What are some of the things to consider when you're selling in another country? Yes, language. Many people speak different languages than we do. We need to be comfortable with that. And it is important to learn other languages. It can be a very big benefit when you're looking at selling globally. Culture. People in other countries may have different likes and dislikes than we do here. So it is important to understand and respect what those differences might be. Currency. Different countries have different currencies, and this can be a challenge when you're trying to sell your product in another country. And shipping. This is something that is important to consider when you're looking at trading or with another country. So now you've had a look at some of the things that are going to be a challenge. So you need to know that if we've decided to expand your businesses to another country, then you may have to give up the opportunity to expand in your own country. Not every entrepreneur will make the choice to sell globally, as it can be a lot of work and very expensive expanding and changing to sell globally. An example of opportunity cost would be a business owner choosing to get a thousand dollar business loan to buy new equipment. He will have to give up taking a vacation until he pays back the loan. The vacation is considered the business owner's opportunity cost. Now let's play how countries connect game. I'm going to ask the teacher again to pause this particular slide and give you a chance to read through the instructions. Each of you will be handed an import card and an export card. The yellow card is your import card and the blue card is your export card. A classmate has a resource you need and you have a resource he or she needs. You are going to need to find each other and trade your cards. Have fun, and I hope to see you soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed playing the Connect game. On pages 14 and 15, you are going to see a map of the world with the location of some of the countries that you may have seen on your import or export card. Take some time to find your country on the page. Thank you again for having me. I hope you enjoyed learning about more than money.